Analyst. I want to go across uh, to Amitabh Ghosh first. You've been a key part of the India Today lunar journey. We didn't go anywhere close to the moon, but with all these graphics, the animations, uh, the enthusiasm was quite there, and we felt like we were part of the lunar journey. You know, you, the Indian scientists were very, very confident. You were confident and yet being careful, saying that keep open the prospect of something going wrong. Uh, the fact that this isn't 100% till it's actually happened. Uh, give your sense of, you know, this moment, what it means for India and India's place in the global space community. Right. So, so where can I start? So I have been part of many missions. So, so your thing shows Mars Exploration Rover mission? No, it's also Curiosity. It's also Mars Pathfinder, Spirit Opportunity, Mars Phoenix Lander. And the reason that, that you said, you know, the, I have been cautious because the last moments, you don't know what will happen. I have been in that control room and there are times that, you know, it has ended in laughter and there has been times it has not. So, so you know, here the defining point was so, so you remember the commentary that says the, what is the velocity and what is the altitude? And then it says, well, 800 meters and the velocity is this. So when you're within that envelope, that, that safe envelope, so if it was 800 meters and it is still going at 100 miles an hour, it's kind of a problem. So when you're in that safe envelope, then you're finally safe. And that is when I could actually relax. And that is when, you know, I breathed a sigh of relief. And so, you know, and the experience is such, you know, um, this is not about the media. This is about a journey as a scientist. I can feel for the scientists who are there because I was there. So that is where I, there were tears in my eyes. And, you know, it was such an overwhelming moment. And, and the other thing which I would point out, you know, India came into this. I went to the U.S. in 93. India did not have a space program then. 2004, 2005, that's when we launched. In 20 years, India has two planets, three orbiters, one lander, one rover. Not a mean feat. So oh, it's it's a it's a it's a very big deal. So so we have to put it in context of history. So so you know these things were kind of a dream in nineties. See the reason I went abroad, um, there was no space program in nineteen ninety three kind of planetary science program. But now you have. I mean the people who are going to school today can think that well maybe they're going to walk, work on data from the uh, from the Vikram lander and the Pragyan rover, right? So that it's a huge deal. Uh, where does this mission and its success place India in the global space hierarchy if there were one? So, because we're the fourth country to have pulled off a successful landing on the moon, this time on the South Pole, does that then, by some accounts, make India the fourth major space power or you think that wouldn't be correct? See, I think that would be correct because... Um, Okay, NASA had, ha, has had human missions, which are like kind of uh, much more massive missions. Um, the launch vehicle is 30 times larger, so it's much more complex. Um, Russia had, has very complex missions. China, I think, had five or six missions. So they first landed, then they went to the other side of the moon, then they brought samples back, then they survived the lunar light. So I think it would be rightful to summarize what you said. India is very much the fourth power, but there are, you have to understand many people have failed. The Israelis have failed. These are not really, these are very strong technical teams. Israel, Israelis have failed. The Japanese private mission also failed. So it's absolutely, you know, you should look at in, it in, in the context. In the past, Russia has achieved more, but at this moment, given Russia's internal condition, given uh, India's trajectory and our current position, would India be, the, the where, where would India compare with Russia? Are we close to beating Russia virtually there or have you already done that? So here is the drill. If you don't practice it, you lose it. The reason Elon Musk is developing the Starship now is because American capability with the Saturn V launch vehicle, they did not maintain it. Same here, the Russia did not maintain its capability. See, capability is not something permanent. You might be able to do something, but well, um, if you don't practice it, you're gone. So here, I would not jump to that conclusion, but... Um, you can say India, an Indian mission is more reliable at this point. If there was bookies out there who bet on a mission, 
then the Indian mission probably they would bet more favorably. You know, you're more American now, but I can feel the Desi Ghosh come out and all of what you're saying. So, uh, Jay, and okay. that's fantastic. So, Mark Ray Chaudhary, okay. uh, you know, what this moment means, uh, Professor Ghosh calling this, uh, you know, a moment where India virtually becomes the third major space power, maybe, you know, just getting a little ahead of the Russians or at least definitely the fourth. Uh, your sense of what this means in the arc of India's space odyssey? Well, I mean, I... Uh... I agree with Dr. Goshen in a way because, but, but then India uh, came into this uh, a major um, uh, missions, uh, taking astronomers seriously and and looking at uh, astronomical missions. Actually, in the in the uh, second half of the uh, the nineties, where, where um, the first AstroSat meetings were held, when Dr. Kasturi Rangan was the uh, was the chairman, I, I remember being in them where uh, that was ninety six, ninety seven, something like that. AstroSat was finally launched, well, a, a conglomeration of five telescopes together on the same platform uh, 20 years later in, in 2015. So, um, um, but then that, that's been in the making since then. But now this is timed perfectly with the opening up of um, the space industry to private players. And, and you, it's no coincidence that uh, the, the, the Indian space industry is now also opening up to private players because if you look at the global space market now, it is almost a $500 billion industry. And if you're talking of India being in the top four or five superpowers in space, even three, we don't even, um, we're we not a player in even, I don't know, four or 5% of, of this global space industry. And that is because it is ISRO who has run India's space industry and an industry has uh, the real private industry has actually supported um, ISRO. Now, with the new policy, space policy, with uh, ISRO opening up and promising to mentor uh, startups and uh, and major companies coming into the space industry, this means that there is intent to uh, become a player in, in in the global space race. And and this, as that industry grows, this means that that Indian um, entrepreneurs and, and Indian uh, um, industry in general outside the government organizations are now, now going to play an important role. Professor uh, Chaudhary, do you want to spend a moment describing the significance of the experiments that will be carried out by the Pragyan over the next 14 days and what we hope to achieve and why what we're about to find out could potentially, if everything goes well in a few hours from now when the Pragyan actually comes out of the rover, why this could be breaking new scientific ground? I mean, I think uh, very, very importantly, I mean, we have to, of course, look at the motivation for the the uh, the science that that we want to get out of it um the um uh, we're studying not just the composition of uh, of uh, the soil and the rock and what's under the rock uh, but also looking at the composition of the uh, the air the little bit of air that's near the surface of the of the of the moon as well as the plasma um uh, part of that now the, the, the larger picture is, uh, there are twofold. One is pure science. We want to know how the Earth-Moon system formed. Earth and Moon formed at the same time, along with the solar system four and a half billion years ago. And when the Earth and the Moon formed, they were in fluid state and they separated and then made of the same material. And, and, and they, were, they, became, um, they became mixed in a very different way. So you can find things on the Moon which should be in the Earth as well, but because they might not be on the surface. 